What's up guys, Jeff here, Mad Hatter's Reef, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 beginner friendly corals. But before we jump into that, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be the know every single time that we upload a new episode. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you check out our other videos. We've got a ton of content here. We talk about fish, we talk about corals, we talk about inverts, we talk about reef tanks, we talk about saltwater aquariums, we talk about fish only, we talk about it all. All right, so let's talk about top 10 beginner corals. Let's go. Kicking things off with number 10, we got the neon green toadstool leather. Now, this is one of my most favorite toadstool leathers, and not all toadstools are created equal. There's a lot of different variations of this coral, and if you are interested in this one specifically, uh, being one of my personal favorites, this is definitely one that you want to make sure that you know what you're getting into before you actually buy it. Now, as far as being a beginner coral, it's very forgiving. And one thing that I do want to mention while we're talking about it is toadstools do this weird thing where they kind of clam up for a period of time. They'll basically pull in their polyps, uh, which they'll do daily, especially when the lights turn out or something crawls across it. But they'll pull in their polyps, they'll look kind of down, and then they will shed like this mucus layer, and then all of a sudden, everything's good. The whole process takes about three days. So if you have that happen to your toadstool, it's perfectly normal, it's actually healthy, and it's a good sign that it is growing. One thing that you want to keep in mind about this coral is that they do get big, but they are an awesome beginner coral. Check them out. The Neon Green Toadstool Leather. Coming in at number 9 on our top 10 best beginner corals is the Blasto. Now the Blasto is shoot for Blasto Musa, and there are two different varieties of Blastos out there. You have the Welsi and also the Merletti. My favorite is the Welsi because they're a lot bigger generally with their polyps and you really get some nice fluffy looking corals. This one is a purple and blue variety, which is absolutely stunning. And one thing that you want to keep in mind when you are putting Blastos into your tank, they don't require a whole lot of flow and a whole lot of light. So they definitely prefer dimly lit tanks over highlight, which in this shot right here, I got it under a little too much light and you're kind of losing some of the coloration there. But obviously, it's happy enough. It's still fluffy and definitely a coral to consider for those dimly lit parts of your reef tank. They are forgiving for the most part and definitely something a beginner should consider to add a splash of color in those not so well lit spots. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 best beginner corals is the Green Duncan. Now, the Green Duncan is one of my most favorite beginner corals out there. Uh, they do really well. A lot of folks love them. Even folks that have been in the hobby for a period of time find a little bit of love for the Duncan. Now, there seems to be two different varieties of these guys. There's like a tabling type, which stays really tight and you get a lot of heads in like a cluster formation. There's also the branching type, which they grow an arm shoot off a head, grow another arm, shoot off a head. And those are a little bit easier to frag than the balling or tabling type. Now, as far as being a beginner coral, very forgiving. The reason I like this coral for a lot of beginners too is that it's a indicator coral. So if there are things that are happening in your tank from a parameter standpoint, this coral is going to let you know because it's not going to open up and be as fluffy or as happy as it typically is once it gets settled into a tank. Obviously, when you first put it in the tank, it's going to be a little grumpy. You know, it's going to take a little time to figure things out. But once it gets settled in, it is the canary in the coal mine. Coming in at number seven in our top ten best beginner corals is the bird's nest. Now, the bird's nest is a SPS coral, which much like a LPS, the SPS stands for small polyp stony. Now, most of the times, your small polyp stonies are going to be intermediate to advanced. You know, you're talking about Montiporas, you're talking about Acropora. Bird's Nest, I believe, is one of those corals that can kind of fall into that beginner category with some special consideration. Uh, the great thing about this coral is it's going to give you that confidence to take the next step to more advanced corals. Now, even though that we are putting this into the beginner category, it does require some a little bit more upkeep than, let's say, some of the other corals that we've talked about here so far. Uh, this coral can grow so fast that it actually can stall out or even uh, start to regress from pulling too much of the nutrients that it needs to grow out of the water. So you need to stay up on your water changes, but if you commit to that, it's a great coral to consider for your first SPS coral. 
Next up, we got number six on our top 10 best beginner corals, and we got the Knobby Sea Rod coming in, and that guy is one of my most favorite corals. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties of Gorgonian. This one specifically is a larger branch, larger polyps. It has a purple coloration under the blue lights and a purplish brown coloration under your lower Calvin lights. Uh, definitely one that is a good beginner coral. The strange thing about this coral is I never really kept one until I opened the store. And now I have a really hard time imagining a reef tank without one. They do fall into their own category. They're not necessarily a softy. They're not necessarily a stony coral. They are a Gorgonian. And Gorgonians are actually their own classification. Uh, that has to do with the type of texture that they're made of. They have a support system that's not necessarily bone. It's like a thick cartilage almost and if this guy were to die off you would see a remnants of what looks like a bare tree a lot of different varieties of this coral definitely a great one to add to the reef tank and consider for your tank at home coming in at number five we got the green rhodactus mushroom now even though this is on a coral list the mushroom is not technically a coral it's technically Corallia mephoria. And if you have been a subscriber and viewer of this channel for a long time, I am just as surprised as you are that I said that correctly. And I feel like that deserves a like if you haven't done so already. Go ahead, hit it. You know you want to hit it. Hit that like button. But mushrooms are definitely a great way to add some color to your tank. And they are incredibly forgiving and often a great beginner coral. Uh, some of them a little bit harder to keep than others. The Rhodactus is, I would say, you know, as far as mushrooms go, they're a little bit more difficult than like your Discosamas, but they aren't probably as hard as your Yumas. But if you're not neglecting your tank and you're staying up on your maintenance, you should be able to keep just about any type of mushroom as long as it is healthy. The aquaculture is definitely the way to go over wild caught. Wild caught really has a hard time in a reef tank. It doesn't really matter if you're a beginner or not. I said wild caught, I meant collected, but you knew what I meant. Coming in at number four in our top 10 best beginner corals is zoanthids. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about when you talk about zoanthids, and probably the most important one being is paleotoxin. Now, not all zoanthids contain paleotoxin, but all zoanthids should be handled as if they contain paleotoxin. So anytime that you are handling these, it's not a bad idea to throw in some gloves, especially if you have cuts on your hands or, you know, if you're doing some maintenance in your tank, you don't want to be ripping at these things in the water because you could release this toxin. And if it enters into your bloodstream, you're not going to have a good time. There has been folks that have been exposed to paleotoxin that have died. Now, I'm not trying to scare you away from zoanthids. I'm just trying to educate you so that you know if you're going to keep these in your reef tank because they're beautiful, like this one right here, that you are handling them with care, not only for yourself, but your loved ones and your pets uh, because paleotoxin exposure is a real thing. You need to protect yourself. They don't require a whole lot of light and they add a lot of color to a reef tank. So they're definitely a good one for a beginner to consider. Coming in at number three, one of my favorites, the acans. Acans are technically a type of brain coral. They are an LPS coral, which is a hobby generated term, even though that we didn't talk about that earlier with some of the other LPSs. LPS, large polyp stony. These guys are very beautiful, very colorful. Uh, they're reactive to feeding. So if you're looking to have a coral that you can feed and get a little bit more color in your tank, definitely one to consider. And the colorations on these things are absolutely amazing. Now, as far as feeding goes, they can be fed, you know, mysis or even pellets. I've taken pellets, held them under the water, wait until they kind of soaked up some of the water and then they'll drop right in. You will visibly see the A-can reach up with its tentacles, grab and close up with the food and they definitely benefit from feeding now the reason that that is important is because any coral that feeds is going to be able to get nutrients another way if the lighting's a little bit off or the parameters a little bit off it's going to get some nutrients which is going to help it maintain its color and grow and coming in at the number two spot on our best beginner corals is the purple postulopora. This guy is super hairy. Again, another SPS coral. And SPS corals typically, you know, they can be a little bit more on the difficult side. But this one is super forgiving and is going to do a really good job uh, making, you know, that beginner feel a little bit of success with the SPS type corals. Now, as far as placement goes, this guy I would try to keep towards the top of the rock work, depending on what type of lights you have. If you have, you know, stronger lights, obviously you might want to put it maybe a little bit lower. But if you have weaker lights that are not very strong, 
definitely put it towards the top. Make sure that's getting plenty of flow. You want to see it moving around and seeing those polyps out and about and kind of waving around like you see right here, that's going to let you know that this coral is in the right spot and that it is happy. There are a few different color morphs of this coral. Purple is my personal favorite. There's also green and definitely a forgiving SPS coral that is going to be a great addition to a beginner's reef tank. And coming in at the number one spot, we got the neon green candy cane. 